so one thing I often think about, I wonder about, I won't, I won't call it a nightmare, but something I wonder about uh, often at night is, are, you know, are we um, in all our very smart, hardworking earnestness, it seems to me, are we uh, any different than sort of the, some of the greatest physicists of the day 120 years ago, 130 years ago? Let's say the, the people who were working out the real consequences of, of um, Maxwell and electromagnetism which led to things like relativity and so on. But before we get to Einstein, people were immensely talented. Some of them were mathematical wizards of a sort that, that most of us can't reproduce. And ironically, these were sort of, in some sense, better people at calculating than, than, than some of us today. Now we have computers to do some of that stuff. They were, they were um, at the top of their game by any measure uh, in Britain and other parts of uh, Europe and so on. And, they, and what they thought their job was, was to understand the ether, the physics of the ether, what they called the luminiferous ether, which is to say, if light is a wave, as there was a great body of evidence to suggest it was, then what was it a wave in? Ocean waves are waves of water. Sound waves are waves sort of in the air, in the atmosphere. What are light waves, if not waves, in some other medium, some light-carrying medium? And so in some sense, their job, as they saw it, was to do the physics of the ether, to understand this all-pervading stuff which has mysterious properties. They could make predictions and calculations and have them checked by experiment, and they would check to better than percent accuracy. It starts sounding a little familiar, right? Until um, 30, 40, 50 years into that gig, where people learned a lot, people like Albert Einstein came along and said, what if there's no ether? What if the ether is not so much wrong as merely superfluous, were his famous words in 1905. What if, what if that enormous accumulation of human ingenuity and careful skill and experimental test and you know amazingly rigorous mathematics what if that was chasing something that was simply not there it's not part of our world that doesn't make everyone who worked on it an idiot they weren't dupes it wasn't wishful thinking it was the way science often works right and so i don't know i don't think therefore we are as as benighted as those poor Maxwellians from uh, the previous, you know, a century and a half ago. Uh, but one does wonder, what, what that, I guess that's the nature of conceptual revolutions, is you, you usually don't see them coming.